Yeah. Nearly 30 years ago, Van Halen's jump hit number one. The band and Eddie Van Halen have been going strong for over 40 years in the world of rock. LL Cool J is about to celebrate 30 years himself in the world of hip-hop. And these two music icons have now joined forces for a new project. It's LL Cool J's authentic album. So I guess the obvious question is, <laughs> how did you two guys meet? <laughs> at a meeting? It's an unusual pairing. <laughs> at a meeting, yeah. I, um, you know, I, I reached out to Eddie. I, you know, I had an idea about doing, you know, a, a song that has some rock guitar on it. And, uh, you know, I feel like Eddie's the best in the world. And, you know, I reached out to him and was hopeful, had my fingers crossed that he would be into, you know, working on the record with me. And, and uh, I played, he came by the studio, I played the demo for him. And he said, you know, let's rock and roll. He, he played me some other songs and it was such a diverse record. Uh, when I first got the call, you know, I was, it was such a left to center uh, thing. And I went, what the hell would we want, he want with me? You know, uh, but I agreed to meet with him. So I go down there, and his enthusiasm and his—he's a pretty his, impressive guy. Isn't well, he's just so excited, you know. Yeah. And he played me all this diverse stuff, and I'm going, I'd really like to be a part of this. And uh, the interesting thing about the song itself is, uh, I got to give him a lot of credit for being open to pushing the envelope and experimenting and not being afraid to do things that haven't been done. Because usually in a song, in during the vocal. Right. There's rhythm guitar. Mm. Well, I'm ripping guitar solo while he's while the vocals going on. Yeah. So it's a very unique, interesting uh, 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 combination yeah, blend. You know what I mean? You play a big part in my life, my early life. Because when I was 19, Jump came out. It was a huge, huge hit, wasn't yeah. it? So like it, one of those it, things you sort of it was, like dream of as a rock star. It's funny because at the time I had played on Beat It, on Michael Jackson's record, and his album went to number one. Mm -hmm. And our album was number two. Our single was number one. His single was number two. Then he did that Pepsi commercial. He burned his hair and he stayed at number one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> selfie, and, and, selfie, <laughs> man. <laughs> to this day, you know, the guys in the band still blame me for that album, <laughs> for that album not going to number one. Is it's it your true? fault. Is it true you didn't get paid to be on the Jackson? I did it as a favor, you know. So Michael uh, Jackson rings up and says, Eddie, Eddie, you're the best guitarist in the world. Can you play on my song, Beat It? It's a smash hit around the world, well, and you get zero dollars. Well, I didn't ask for anything. Uh, it was about 20 minutes out of my life. Quincy had called me up and, and asked me if I wanted to do it. And the honest God truth, uh, uh, the, the band's policy was, you know, we don't do things outside of the band uh, at the time. And uh, yeah, everybody was out of town, so I had no one to ask. <laughs> and I swear to God, I figured, who's going to know? If I play on this Black Kids record, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the funniest thing of all was, was I, I actually rearranged the song. The section they wanted me to solo over it was just you know there's no chord changes underneath it. So I had him rearrange the song, and then Michael came in and I said, "Oh, I hope you don't mind. I changed your song," and he listens. And he goes, "No, I I really like that high fast stuff you do." <laughs> And uh, that was it. You know, it took yeah. about 20 what minutes. You, out of my what do you life. feel about what happened to Michael Jackson? The big court case going on at the moment. But I mean, a really sad end to one of the world's great careers. He was a sweet guy, is all I know. You know, he yeah. got accused of a lot of things, and uh, he, was, he was just, uh, I think, uh, you know, he, he he wanted to remain a kid himself. And, and just, I, uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Mike. Um, you know, we were we weren't super tight friends, but we were friends. And a couple of times, I got to fly with him and. And, you know, he, he gave me some good advice. He told me, LL, no matter what you do, never limit yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, he also told me that, you know, if they can, you know, if they can whistle the melody, then the, the record can be heard worldwide. And it can, the whole world can rock to it. You yeah. know? Or, or if you can dance. You know, or if you can yeah. dance a little bit. So, <laughs> you know. What about for people like me that can neither write melodies nor dance? Yeah, but you can listen. You can whistle a little yeah, bit. Guitar yeah, guitar Yeah, you might be able to whistle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little whistle in you. Now, hello. I've interviewed you a few times. I've never interviewed you, uh, Eddie, uh, unfortunately, but I'm delighted to now. Neither but... one of us have interviewed you. <laughs> no, no, we'll leave that. It's for very true. Time. But the question I've really wanted to ask you since it happened <laughs> is my favourite story probably of the last ten years was the burglar that broke into your house. That's not the yeah. favourite bit. Yeah. Breaks into your house in the middle of the night. You're there with your four children, your wife. Right. And you come down and you find this guy. And the reason is my favourite story was the police statement, mm. which had your real name, James Todd Smith. And it said, Mr. Smith was unhurt after the altercation and the burglar suffered a broken jaw, broken cheek, broken nose and broken ribs. 
<laughs> yeah. You Talk know, about the wrong yeah, guy, yeah. wrong house. Yeah, I, the wrong I, house. Yeah, in, in all seriousness, tell me yeah. about that. Um, you know, my alarm went off at, at 1 o'clock in the morning, and um, not to the alarm, but the delay, entry delay, and I looked, scrolled through it. Family room. And I said to my wife, like, family room? I'm thinking maybe my daughters are coming in, so I strolled downstairs in my underwear, you know, just to see what's going on, and I get down there, and this guy comes out of my kitchen at me, and I detained him. <laughs> I think I did what any man would do, you know, what, or what most men would do, which is do whatever you got to do to protect your family. Absolutely and right. Yeah. I had to do that, and uh, I'm just glad that I was able to stop and, you know, let the authorities take care of the rest and not try to take justice. Not, not as glad as the burglar was. I oh, man, think. yeah. With, yeah. Me, uh, with me, you're breaking your face in an Uzi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on that bombshell, uh, let's, uh, let's take a short break. Let's come back. I want to talk to you about survival in a notoriously risky business. You two are two great survivors. I don't know how you've done it. All right. Let's and about, about what you do with that Uzi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uzi weighs a ton. Hold it now. Rock legend Eddie Van Halen, hip-hop icon, LL Cool J, team up the LL's latest album, Authentic. You just heard one of the two songs, Not Leaving You Tonight. So just at the break there, fastly, we're talking about your son, who's joined you in the band. Uh, he's 22, Wolfgang. He's been playing, you said, since he was 10, and you had this eureka moment when you realised the boy had got rhythm. OK, I bought him a drum kit, and I sat there for a while, you know, and, and one day I was in the kitchen, and I hear, faintly hear this... And he was doing something that I've never heard any drummer do for one for one thing with one foot. Mm -hmm. it's, it had the lope of with two feet. Mm -hmm. We were doing it with one, so I was, I'm going, who's up there playing? Mm -hmm. I run up there, and it was him. And he, he must have been eight, mm -hmm. something like that. And so I just went, whoa! You know? <laughs> but uh, uh, more interesting, though, is uh, the perspective of a different generation that he brings you know, uh, uh, to the band and his his opinion of our music. Mm. Like, we, he's in charge of the set list and, and the, you know, our latest record. Mm. He said, no, we should do that song. No, no. You know, he was the one pretty much in charge. How do you cope with the mantle of, as LL called you, the greatest guitarist in the world? Because many people think you are. Uh, say that again? What? The greatest guitarist in the world. How do I feel about that? How do you that? cope with that title? Uh, well, I didn't come up with the title. Uh, <laughs> no, they did. <laughs> well, it's... I just do my thing, you know? It's like, uh, it's just an opinion. The worst, the worst thing for an artist is to be judged by a standard that you don't want to be judged by. In other words, you know, you make a, you know, a song with Eddie Van Halen and yeah. someone's comparing it to a record that is designed specifically for, you know, the barbershop in the hood. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just, they're different. Like, like, with this project and what we're doing, I wanted to bridge gaps. I wanted to do something that hip-hop hasn't done before in terms of a full album. Like, Run DMC worked with Aerosmith many, many years ago, and that was a, a breakthrough moment. But no one has ever gotten an album and put an album together where they have people like Eddie Van Halen, and they have Seal, and they have, you know, um, you know Brad Paisley and all of these different artists on one record together. That that hasn't... Well, talking, talking of Brad Paisley, you know, uh, this... this... Furore that erupted over accidental yeah. racist. Yeah. What were you trying to achieve? With what it? I what I was trying to achieve is, is don't judge a book by its cover. It, exactly. That was it. Was really that simple. Trying to don't judge a book by its cover, and you know, also, we have to get past the pa get past what happened in the past if we're going to really have a future together. Um, you know, it, I think that the bitterness thing. I think people. Really miss it. People thought that I was say I was trying to trivialize slavery, which is ridiculous. You know, I couldn't, with good conscience, as a black man in America who was born and raised here, just just say, okay, that didn't exist, and that's and it's all okay because it's not okay. That's not what I was implying. But um, what I was trying to say is, I also don't feel like I need to walk around upset with every white person I meet or upset with every southern white that I meet or Midwestern white that I meet just because of what happened in the past. There are generational issues, but we have to get past it. And I'll give you an example. When you look at what happened with a kid like Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. you look at the, the kids that are arrested every day and thrown in prison for no reason, mm -hmm. harassed by police for no reason, other than the fact that 
their clothing is the way it is. I was saying, don't judge a book by its cover. If you want to be, be around that flag and you want to represent Southern pride, okay, I can tolerate that to a certain extent. If, if you don't arrest my son, you don't harass the kids, you, we get rid of that, that glass ceiling, you know, those are the things that I was trying to imply, and I think that is such a complex topic that I think people, they thought I was talking about one thing when I was talking about another, and, you know, I, I hope I, I mean, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. On yeah. top of that, there's plenty of white people who don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so that's right. But it, was, it, was an interesting, it was an interesting thing to deal with, though. It was very interesting because at the end of the day, you know, it, it, things always land on the side of love, man. Yeah. And, and love conquers all, you know? And, you know... And music, too. And, mu that's what the, and that's what the song... Yeah. That's why... That's what um, we endure. Why? Because music is the answer to war. That's one of the lyrics in the song. We're it the is greatest. the universal language. It Tell is. me this, Eddie. I mean, you're, you're nearly 60. I hope you yeah. don't mind me saying that. You look great on it, by the way. Thank um, you. Given you, too. You, thank you very much. I'm not the same age as you. I just look here. Um, but you're, you're a recovered alcoholic. You've been clean a long time. Uh, you've survived oral cancer and various other ailments. How have you survived the business, though? Because so many people in your trade have died young of overdoses, alcoholism, whatever it may be. I'm very lucky. Yeah, but what, what do you put it down to, though? What is the art of survival? Good genes and, um, no, actually, just uh, music, you know? Making music. Yeah. You know, uh, keeps you young. Can you still do that jump? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. same height? Well, it hurts a little more. Yeah. When I, <laughs> when I land. <laughs> it's not the so tall. Well, yeah, well, it's not the jump, it's the landing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it is a, it's a really unusual pairing, but it's incredibly effective. And I think Thank everyone you. should go and listen to it, because you, you will love the tracks that you've done. But the whole album is, is typical L O Cool J. It's new, it's innovative. It's Thank exciting. You. And, and that was the most that. important thing to be innovative for me. Yeah, well, it, it always is with you. It even down fun. to the Thank even you. down to the jewelry you wear in my studio. <laughs> uh, you can also check out the dates for the Van Halen tour, van uh, van slash Halen dot com. Great to see you. Yep. Great to meet you. And you know what? The Kings of the Mic tour is coming too, so I'll be out there. How do they get details of that? Go to LLCoolJ.com, check it out. Get details. And while you're at it, go to PiersMorgan.com. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't actually exist, and I don't have a tour. And hit me up on Twitter. And hit me up on Twitter too while you're at it. Yeah, no, you can hit me up on Twitter, definitely. <laughs> At Piers Morgan. You can open for both of us. <laughs> Guys, thank you both very thank much you, indeed. Thank you, Piers. Two great legends. Next, That's the inside fun. story uh, to Matt Lauer and Curry in the Brutal Morning Show Wars. I'll talk to author Brian Stelter, who sets the record straight. That's coming up next.